The Transforming Universities for a Changing Climate is a three-year global challenges research fund project exploring the role of universities in addressing the climate crisis. The origin of, uh, of this project uh, is in our concern about climate change um, and our concern about the university and the direction it's going. Um, and our particular project is funded uh, as part of the Global Challenges Research Fund for, for those people who are familiar with, with the UK scene. And it's for international work that addresses cr crucial development challenges. And our specific call was, part, was the education as a driver for sustainable development call. Um, a lot of those projects were looking at basic education. Ours was one of them that focused specifically on higher education. Um, and we see the universities having an absolutely crucial role uh, in relation to the challenge of climate change. For higher education institutions have a crucial role in responding to the climate crisis, not only through carrying out research, but also through teaching, community engagement, and public awareness. The project has four main objectives. To support local action on climate change in the participating countries through creation of participatory action research groups in universities. To assess existing coverage of climate change in the curricula, research, and community engagement activities in the countries to contribute to theory and understanding of the impact of higher education on climate change and sustainable development, as well as to build and strengthen national, regional and global university networks and knowledge on climate change. We have three universities participating and Ken uh, uh, is uh, part of the collaborative effort. We believe that uh, this is going to continue even beyond the project. We believe that the interactions that we've started will continue. Uh, we've had uh, interactions with the TRG group members like uh, we have discussed before. And uh, the efforts that we're seeing through the curriculum reviews uh, in the three universities as well as the green activities has come up as a result of the interactions we've had with the university community as well as other stakeholders. And uh, this is something that we want to see going forward that the interaction between uh, institutions themselves but also institutions and other stakeholders without uh, the inverse boundaries to address issues uh, related to climate change. Uh, we are involved, like already highlighted by Dr. Jacqueline Nyerere, who is a lead person in the country for the three uh, universities. And we are part of the team that is uh, working on this uh, element of uh, uh, you know, transforming university. And I think the center of this whole story is where do, how do the universities take their place? I think that is what we must take home. The universities need, and Kemu in particular as an example, need to take its place. Uh, we are working with a community, a coastal community in, um, in Fiji. And um, one of the issues that uh, was brought to light, that was one of the reasons we uh, uh, was engaged with this uh, community is um, um, their watershed is drying. Um, and it, it's interesting to go uh, in Fiji, one of our uh, cultural practices, the, the culturally accepted way of, um, of sharing information is Talanoa, where we sit down and we talk, storing. Um, uh, to, to find out about, uh, for them to tell us their story. And then we see the gaps and we see where we can collaborate with them in um, addressing the issues uh, that they are facing. Uh, at the University of Pasfund, we implemented a green office. Green office is an um, academic office uh, with the aim to empower uh, the students regarding uh, actions to sustainability. Uh, the Green Office um, is um, doing many activities 
as research, outreach, and also teaching uh, the students uh, with many different uh, ideas, uh, including climate change and sustainable development goals. And uh, we come to plant more trees, but we also come to see you and see whether you are taking care of the trees, whether the trees are still growing. We were told that we don't plant these days, we grow the tree. If you remember, we were told to grow the tree, because putting it on the ground is not enough. We must ensure it gets to become a tree like the ones behind you. The second day saw the Transforming Universities for a Changing Climate project launch its Green Education Hub. Climate U has dedicated itself to spread awareness and knowledge on climate change among university students and those who are on the lower educational levels too. The launch of the hub was held at the Business and Student Services Center on 11th May 2022. The principal investigator and co-investigators from Fiji and Brazil, the university's deputy vice-chancellor, government officials, We Do Not Have Time, Kenya Chapter, and other organizations involved in climate actions and advocacy were in attendance. COVID has given us some lessons. Uh, Pre-COVID, there was a lot of distrust of universities and experts that have been spread by some populist leaders around the world. And I think COVID brought a, a return of interest and valuing of the university. Um, the Sustainable Development Goals have also brought a return of interest in higher education as one of the key players uh, in, in solving our global problems. We need to think about the global level, we need to think about the national level. But none of that is going to have any impact if we don't have people at the grassroots developing their own initiatives, innovating, experimenting, working in, in classrooms, uh, in clubs, and of course students are at the centre. Um, if students aren't adopting uh, this agenda, if they are not allowed the freedom to innovate, to create their own action, none of this change will, will really happen. Um, so it's fantastic to see that the Kenyatta has been has provided the space uh, to harness the energy that, that, that the student body is bringing. It's really a great occasion for us. Uh, this is a project that has been running since 2020 and due to COVID uh, restrictions, uh, there are uh, certain uh, cases where we get to meet virtually, uh, including with the project team. And we are honored uh, that the project team chose to visit uh, Kenyatta University for our very first physical meeting because we now have an opportunity to also see what the teams in the three universities participating in this project uh, uh, have done. So they have an opportunity to visit all the participating universities. So it's an opportunity uh, to interact uh, and collaborate across uh, the participating universities here in Kenya as well as uh, the project at large. Uh, under the Transforming Universities for Changing Climate Project, we have begun to see the impact of the hub. <coughs> Today, the hub is marking the first of its many green education days. Days that will be marked every every last Friday of each month. Uh, the hub marks this green education day at a time when universities are being encouraged to actively 
take part in climate action. Universities can play a role in championing climate action and sustainable development through teaching, training, research and public awareness. The participation of Kenyatta University in the Transforming Universities for a Changing Climate Project has provided space for the university to talk the talk and walk the walk in matters of climate action. Beginning next, next semester, students across all faculties of Kenyatta University will be exposed to climate information through the revised Growing Leaders Program. Two topics on leadership and climate change and sustainable development have been incorporated in the course. Jeremy Munene Kaboro is a research associate for the Transforming University for a, cli a Changing Climate Research Project in Kenya. Now, this young blood holds a master's degree in sustainable urban development from the Kenyatta University. Jeremy, welcome to our studio. Thank you. Uh, K K KU Green Education Hub was launched on 11th May. Uh, 2022. Mm -hmm. It's a center of information. Mm -hmm. The hub stores materials to expose students to climate information. Mm -hmm. We store uh, local case uh, studies uh, uh, documentation in short videos. We display portraits and these materials are co-created with the students. We give the student the chance to participate in creating materials that expose their peers to matters of sustainability issues. MHU researchers visit to Kisi University provided an ideal chance for them to learn more about the piloted interventions at the institution by the Participatory Action Research Group. One of the interventions implemented at the university is mainstreaming climate change content into the institution's curriculum. A new common course, Introduction to Climate Change Management, was designed to be offered to all students in their first year of education. The course presents an opportunity for students to acquire climate change knowledge and skills to engage in climate action initiatives at the university and in their communities. Dr. Frederick Awar and Dr. Asenad Maube gave insights into Kisi University's qualitative case study carried out under the Climate U Research Series. The qualitative case study's primary purpose was to establish the information needs of smallholder farmers concerning carbon emissions and design a carbon literacy program for the group. Through the study, researchers noted that there is a lack of concise and timely climate information to assist the local farmers in coping with extreme weather events aggravated by climate change. The study aimed to utilize farmers' traditional ways of weather forecasting and research data to develop a mobile application. The mobile application will disseminate accurate, comprehensible, and prompt climate information helping smallholder farmers adopt sustainable farming practices to cope with the climate crisis. Moreover, the Participatory Action Research Group selected to implement three feasible greening activities to complement the curriculum intervention. The greening activities promote clean energy and smart farming initiatives and expose students to practical applications of strengthening climate action initiatives. The three greening activities carried out by Kisi University are piloting the performance of top-lead updraft microgasifiers for cooking in households, demonstrating the efficiency of energy-efficient and sensored bulbs, and installing solar panels in a selected building within the university. Dr. George Ogendi, Climate U affiliate researcher at Kisi University, discusses more about the top-lit updraft microgasifiers cook stove. Before us is a stove, which we normally call a gas fire stove. This gas fire stove is very crucial. And uh, the question we start asking ourselves, what is a gas fire stove? It is the cleanest 
burning option to burn solid farmers in a cook stop. In fact, it is very clear that the gas fire burners provide the convenience and efficiency similar to cooking on liquefied petroleum gases. The researchers visited the household of Mr. Peter Ribambo, one of the beneficiaries of the microgasifiers cookstov. The field visit provided an opportunity for the researchers to experience firsthand the efficiency of the cookstov. Mr. Peter Ribambo demonstrated how to operate the cookstov and produce activated charcoal. Cool it. Now they let it cool free like that and then they grind. They yeah, get up. Nko konyora embe elia embe elia kovor robun elia ekarogo samba makaroma tengo tuara de carbon. Yes, when you normally uh, burn charcoal, you normally limit the oxygen and it does a lot of carbon. Ono carbon elia se esa makara ya tarigo tuara carbon. But for this kind of carbon which passes through this stuff, there's no that. Amakara ya nagoto ko ya tumeka. This kind of charcoal from this particular stove can be used even when you are in sitting room trying to warm up. Because, because it has less carbon, that's why they just grind it and they form it into activated charcoal. Dissemination and communication of research is an integral part of any research project. The two play a crucial role in increasing the visibility of research outputs and promote further engagement and collaboration to ensure continued support of the piloted project. Dissemination and communication draw the attention of policymakers, communities, academics, and stakeholders to research results and conclusions enhancing their visibility, comprehension, and implementation. Climate 2 researchers in Kenya have been utilizing social media such as Twitter and YouTube to disseminate the project's information to the public and online community. The research have also been relying on mass media tools such as newspapers and TV talk shows to communicate about Climate 2 breakthroughs in Kenya. In November 2022, Climate used three participating universities in Kenya, University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, and University College of London organized a hybrid event. The event aimed to reflect on the implications of COP27 for universities and explore how Climate U can contribute to climate action through green education goals and commitments. Are you aware the COP27 just ended and, we, and the whole issue is about um, the changing climate, what justice is, is it there? Uh, is there justice for, uh, for the developing countries? So as the universities in developing countries, this is something we take leadership of and to try and uh, ensure that our society is well versed on issues of climate change and have um, nuggets and ways of trying to address these issues in their various perspectives. Yeah, thank you very much. Universities uh, need to play several roles among disseminating the knowledge. We know how our communities are a little bit they are deficient in knowledge in respect to climate change. So universities are coming in to demystify so that this knowledge is broken down to the lower level and when now our graduates go back home to their respective communities, they can easily inform their neighbors in that simple language. Therefore, their communities will understand. Other than making it in a complicated way, global warming, climate change, which is scaring people. But if now these learners get this knowledge and they go back to their communities, they tell their parents in one way or another, you as a parent, you are playing a key role in respect to producing these greenhouse gases. Furthermore, the project's researchers in Kenya participated in the 12th Regional Center of Expertise conference held in November 2022 at Kenyatta University. 
Presenting at the conference, Dr. Nyerere called for multi-sector collaboration to use climate use success as a benchmark to support higher education institutions' role of education, research, and community service to address the climate crisis. I'm hoping that uh, we should be able to stress this beyond uh, Kenyatta University and to other education levels. Green Education Day provides a platform for students to create themed awareness on climate issues where we, they can do work, awareness work, they can do tree planting, they can do a community cleaner. project when we finally uh, disseminate, because we'll have a dissemination event at the end, when we finally disseminate, we'll be able to see all this, but before then we can start our own uh, collaborations, we can share ideas, we can borrow and also there are things we can also work through.